Daryl Jones and checking out Detroit Drum Dreams. drumming style soul soulful um energetic We were reading that review and uh, in the Chicago Tribune, mm -hmm. and I'll be honest, I mean, I read a lot of music reviews, mm -hmm. but very rarely does the drummer get that kind of love. Wow. You read that review, I'm assuming. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Very honored. Flattered. I mean, you're basically like a, a Bobby Flay of drumming, <laughs> according to this guy, you know? I'm That's grateful, cool. you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm thankful that now we're in the time where drummers are being recognized. Shout out to, to guys like Questlove, you know, kind of putting the drummer at the forefront. And I'm grateful that we're now, you know, being more recognized. It's not just being in the back, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's, it's a time now for drummers. Work. I was happy for you when I read that, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. You got Dean? Yep. Um, what's a Daru homecoming look like when you come to Detroit? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, it's, it's a lot of love. It's a lot of love. I mean, I grew up in a small small city outside of Detroit, but I still have friends, people's here, so it's always love. It's, just, it's nothing like the, like, like the energy, you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of talent and the people, they seem to, you know, treat us with, you know, warm, you know what I'm saying? And it's, 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 it's good, it's good, it's nothing like it. It's just, the energy is just, it's that, you know what I'm saying? Like home, you know what I'm saying? Like just being embraced and it's, it's a good, it's a good feeling for sure. Is your family able to come on out here and enjoy this and check this out? Yeah, actually, my brother and sister, they're in town. So, yeah, I'm glad that they came. So I'll be able to feel their energy and vibe in the audience, positivity, you know, positive vibe. So, yeah, for sure. What's the over-under on you being able to throw out the first pitch for a Tigers game? I mean, <laughs> as as it, how long is it going to be? Yo, that's not my thing, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Jack, but that's not my thing. I mean, um, he's kind of introduced me to the baseball world, which is cool, you know, it's – but that's not my thing. But you know, big ups and cheers to baseball, and that's it's all good. <laughs> it's nice to be able to get out there and bond with about thirty thousand of your home. Oh yeah, here, so, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it was cool. We had we had a good time, good time, and you know he has a big family, so we all got a chance to mix and mingle and, and meet people, you know, and yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, I started off playing in church, so I have a huge gospel background, and some of my favorite drummers are from Detroit. You know, a guy by the name of Dana Davis, he plays with um, one of my favorite gospel groups called the Winans. They're legendary. Um, they're from Detroit, and I used to come and see them, the Winans, and also um, another gentleman by the name of Michael Williams. He played for a group called Commission, and there's also another group. Um, the Clark Sisters, I'm, I'm not sure if y'all know about the gospel groups, but these are some of the heavyweights and they're all from Detroit. So I remember, you know, always coming down here, coming to the, you know, watching them. And yeah, it's just Dana Davis was my favorite, one of my favorite drummers because he had a pocket. He was all about playing groove, you know what I'm saying? So I learned that early, 
you know, coming to church. It wasn't it wasn't all about playing the fastest licks. You know, it's a different day now. But yeah, Dana, you know, that pocket that really helped shape my beginning, my beginning um, um, stages as being a drummer, for sure. Now, how did that naturally uh, evolve into this gig with Black Milk? Just kind of curious. Hmm. So you know, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to do this short, short, sweet. But you know, coming up in church, of course, um, I started there. And then when I went to school, I had friends that were into hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So eventually, I, I wanted to you know learn about this culture, of hip hop. But the, the crazy thing is, I came up in a church where you know everything outside of gospel was secular, and it was a no no. Like we were not supposed to listen to it, but I snuck and listened to it. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, eventually, fast forward. Um, um, I, I started producing and making, making, producing and making tracks. So eventually, I started learning about the cultures of different producers. And um, at that time, in the '90s, some of my big, my biggest influence and favorite producers are such as DJ Premier. Um, he produced for a group called Gangsta, um, RZA from Wu Tang Clan, um, Dr. Dre, and so on and so forth. So just to fast forward, there's another producer from Detroit by the name of Jay Dilla, James Yancey. Actually, actually passed away in um, several years ago via, I think he had lupus, but he's, we, could, we consider him like the best, one of the best hip hop producers to ever do it. He's from Detroit and he had, an, it's another um, producer from Detroit named Black Milk. He was, he was a part of that, you know what I'm saying? He was like a part of that. That, that collective. That collective, like the legacy yeah. with Slum Village, which is the original group that Jay Dilla was in. And Black Milk started producing for Slum Village and, um, um, I actually started drumming with Slum Village, you know what I'm saying? In like 2006, they added a band to the scenario, and just to, just to keep move fast forward, they used to blame Black used to open up the shows to Slum Village, and that's how I met him. He opened up a few shows that we played, and Black he was I guess he was really impressed with our performance. He was like, "Yo, if I ever had a band, or, you know, had a live band, I want y'all to rock." So he ended up taking you know Slum Village band, which I was a part of, and that's how I met Black Milk. Really dope producer, MC from Detroit. And yeah, and that's how I met up with Black Milk. Very cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Yep. What's the transition like musically from Black Milk to Jack White? You know what? Rock and roll and hip hop have similar rules, you know what I'm saying, as far as it being hardcore. And you know, with hip hop, it's all about, well, I, I say the golden era, because hip hop is definitely different nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's different styles of hip hop. You have your Dirty South. Your electronic, you know what I'm saying, and you have your '90s, which is this sample based, you know, hip hop. So, yeah. So the rock and roll, and there's different styles of rock and roll. There's metal, you know what I'm saying. So, um, Jack is a huge hip hop head for y'all that don't know. So he has a love. Sometimes when we're in our sound check before shows, we're playing like N.W.A. and all types of, you know what I'm saying. So, you know, I think Jack wanted to add that, have that type of that, um, that feel. And because since I have like a, you know, for the past 10 years, I've been playing, you know, working in the hip hop scene, New York, Talib Kweli and a lot of those guys. So I think that he, you know, he hired me because he liked, you know, what, what I did. And I think that's the aggression that he, he wanted to add that hip hop element to the rock setting. So it all, it all worked out. He knows what he's doing mm -hmm. and he, he can get the best. Worry, but you, it's crazy. But if you listen to some of the White Stripes stuff, it sounds like you can, it sounds kind of like hip hop beat breaks. Like yeah. you can sample it and, and loop it around. So I just think that, you know what I'm saying? Those two worlds cl clashed. And I just think that that was one of the reasons why he wanted to hire me because he, he thought that, you know, what I brought to the table would be good for what he was trying to do. You uh, have conversations with him about production? Because, you know, you're, you're balancing a lot of things. He's Thank got you. a lot of things going on too. You guys mm -hmm. are really hustling, both of you. Ooh. Um, Sometimes just ra random conversations, but I think we have more Conversations about drummers and the drums, if anything. Okay. Yeah, but he's a genius in his own world, and I respect, and I think he respects what I does, and it's just, he's my boss, but, we, you know, I just, I, it's a cool situation because it's not like some artists you work with, it's them and then it's the band. It's like a separation, but he's, you know, I can shake his hand, we hang out, and it's just like family. It's family. That's awesome. Yeah, so we get a chance to inter interact and, in, you know, mingle with him. He can share some things he like, and, and like and likewise, he's a very, very generous guy. How yeah. how has your career changed, or how is it changing since you've gotten involved with him? Would you say? Hmm, it's, it just opened me to a whole different audience. You know, what I'm saying a whole different audience. You know, the rock the rock guys and people that's a fan of his music now, they can find out. You know, 
dig into the catalog and the people that I've worked with. So it's it's been a good look. But you know what? Um, that's been one of my prayers, even when I started playing drums. I didn't want to just be one dimensional. I didn't want to just be a church drummer. I, I, you know, I had that vision when I was a kid. So I'm grateful that it's, it's, it's all making sense. Like I had times in my career where um, I was introduced, introduced to jazz and I learned, you know, the chick career, you know, I learned all that. And I'm glad that now in my career, I'm venturing off into the rock world, which is, to me, I feel like hip hoppers want to be a rock star. So it, it's working out in my favor where I'm just, by default, I guess becoming a rock star, I guess. <laughs> Expanding that rock Expanding that, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, only God knows. <laughs> um, I'm open to it all, though. Like I said, I've, I've always wanted to be a versatile drummer. And one of my favorite drummers, I'll just mention one, Steve Gadd. Um, I saw him in many situations, but he's always able to play the music. You know what I'm saying? You put him in a Caribbean scenario, jazz, um, pop. You know what I'm saying? He, he played with Steely Dan. So I wanted to be one of those drummers where you could put in any situation and and they get the job done. So that's one of my goals, you know, so hopefully, hopefully that's working out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The energy of coming home and playing these wicked sold out shows, how is that gonna show in tonight's performance? Well, um, I like the, 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 um, the look of, the, of, of the, the room, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot more open. And we played here before and it, it was definitely, from the last time that I was here, it was it was it was fire. It was fire because it was like more like people. The end they had good energy and just the way the setup was. I'm looking forward to hopefully we get that same love back because you know we play off the energy of the audience. So if they if they energize and giving us love, it makes us want to give them you know that love back. So Detroit rock and rock rock out with us. You know what I'm saying? So, you know show us you know what I'm saying show us some love. Drum dreams mean you? Hmm. Wow. It means a lot because, like, you know, just looking around, like, the city's been through a lot. You know what I'm saying? I didn't grow up in the city, but I know about the history being, you know, not too far away from it. But it's been through a lot. 
But, you know, a lot of talent comes out of here. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all we had. All we had was our talent. You know what I'm saying? We didn't, you know, we had to make the best of what we, you know, what, what, we, what we was given. And um, with GM closing and just a lot of things happening, some people left, you know what I'm saying? And some people, you know, stayed here. But I'm grateful that even though I did transition and move to another state, I still got love for my home state. You know what I'm saying? Not just Detroit, but the other cities, the surrounding cities. Like, it's a lot of talent, you know what I'm saying? In, in Detroit, um, sometimes people, you know, they get overlooked. But then you read the Bible, you'd be like, yo, he's from he's from the D, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's a bless it's a blessing to be, you know, to be out of this area, you know what I mean, also the surrounding city. So it, it, it means a lot. It means a lot. Yeah. Because we it's just like we trying to make the best of it, you know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. Yeah, it means a lot. Yeah. My name is Jason, and this is all about Michigan drummers. Yeah. Represent Detroit, um, global wide. And we're about to do this. We're doing it. Doing we are it. live. All right, Dan and Taylor, let's get rolling. <laughs>